So as the acceptance of jellyfish and jellyfish tanks becomes greater every day, the need to expand into more exotic and more varied species also becomes demanding. I've recently met a friend by the name of Chad Widmere who has provided me with the polyps or the starting culture for the golden sea nettle. Not only is this one of the versions of jellyfish that does sting, but it has the long dangling tentacles and gold and brown stripes through its bell. These polyps will require a system built specifically for them so that we can grow them and provide a new species of tank raised golden sea nettles. So we have the area cleaned up now. I want to sit down and take a little bit of time and think how to properly set it up. There are some issues right off the bat. It's a cold water system. It's going to require a refrigeration unit. I really don't want the refrigeration unit in the garage itself. Um, so whatever arrangement we come up with plumbing wise, uh, that unit, like this system, needs to have its chiller outside. So I have to uh, allow for the holes through the wall and the plumbing. I have to reinforce where the chiller is going to sit on top of uh, the one outside. And that way I don't have to have the heat from the chiller being discharged here into the garage, thus re-influencing everything else once again. Lord knows these, these, these fish systems are already running at sometimes 81 degrees. Um, the second issue is um, how to actually properly set it up. Um, I want to have some, some volume to it, so I need to have a largish reservoir. Um, maybe we can utilize one of the uh, large tumblers from the other side for this system. I want to try to minimize how much money I have to put out, but I don't want to do it uh, improperly. So, we need to sit and think about it for a little while and figure out exactly how we want to set it up. Uh, electricity is another issue. I've got power here, but at some point we end up tapping the, the supply here in the garage, especially with all those chillers. Okay, looks like we've got a plan. Um, you can see there's a large uh, display tank to the left. Uh, that'll end up sitting over here, uh, right around in this place. And uh, a row of Ephira tanks, uh, Ephira tank, and a few polyp tanks. And they will be uh, here. And then a, a tumbler or a rotation tank uh, or a large uh, cold water reservoir. And that'll be sitting right here. And then we've already begun to <clears throat> assemble some of the components. This will be the wet-dry trickle filter that we'll be using. There's a protein skimmer and this is a one-third horsepower chiller. That's what we'll be using for the new sea nettle system. Underneath it is the one-half horsepower unit um, that runs the moon jellyfish system. Uh, I'd like to have a, a more capable unit, but work within our uh, financial perimeters. Uh, so this one-third, which I've had, will end up plumbing down through the wall, and then that'll go back into the system uh, and hook into the uh, filter and send the water through the sea nettle system. So the starting point of any project is its foundation. In this case, it would be the wooden rack that will hold all the tanks. We're going to start off by painting them white. Not only does this make for a clean environment, but it also provides what I'll call a, a laboratory look, something better than something that's not painted. And now that the wood is painted, we'll start off by building the shelves that will support the polyp and the Ephira tanks. I'm not really a carpenter, I just dress like one. But I do know that these shelves 
have to be at a proper angle so that the water from the drain lines moves to the left hand side of the system. These shelves also have to be sturdy enough to hold many gallons of water, which equates to many pounds. So we're using a 2x4 frame with half-inch plywood top. Again, we're going to check and make sure that it's level and lean slightly to the left. We're going to go through and pre-drill all the holes. Then we'll come back and using 2-inch wood screws, we'll use this to bind the system together. and always being aware of the need for the slope to the left. With the three main shelves in position, we've decided to add an additional brace or support for the one right end. And with that done, we can now start on the foundation or the risers that will elevate the tumbler or cold water reservoir off the ground far enough so that the drain line can pass underneath it. This riser too will be elevated on some 2x4s placed down their ends. On top of this, we're going to place another 3 quarter inch plywood top, which will form the solid foundation for the tank to sit upon. So as you can see, the system is slowly coming along. There's the two shelves that will support the polyp and ephyra tanks, and the foundation that will support the tumbling tank. Join us for part two and we'll explain how we build the foundation for the large jelly aquarium as well as the filter system. <laughs>